In this video, we'll start exploring the most important need on a homestead, water. The homestead has come a long way in six months from a two acre plot of raw forest. To this point, I've been bringing potable water to the property from my house in suburbia, but that house is almost sold and it's time to make other long-term plans. Obviously, the permanent solution is to drill a well, and I do have plans to do that in the next few years. But that's expensive, a well pump requires a lot of power, and I don't have a home site picked out yet on my land, so I don't want to put anything permanent in the ground yet. I also don't have the good fortune of having a pond or creek or any kind of permanent source of surface water on my property, so the next best thing is to collect rainwater. Rain catchment systems have been used throughout human history, so that's nothing new. But it takes some ingenuity and planning to build a system that will be efficient and safe to drink. And if you have enough roof area and a large enough storage tank, you could theoretically collect enough rainwater for all of your water needs. But in my opinion, a proper off-grid home has redundant systems, so I do plan to have both a well and a rain catchment system. Anyways, in today's video, I'm playing with one of the most important components of my future rain catchment system, the filter. There are all kinds of filters that will work, from primitive filters using sand and charcoal, to advanced systems using reverse osmosis, distillation, ultraviolet lights, flocculent, and more. And I'll probably use some of that in the future. But for now, I'm searching for a simple, active filtration system with a few requirements. First, it needs to be able to use direct current. As most of you know, in an off-grid situation where solar is your main power source, you want to avoid using alternating current as much as possible since you'll lose some power in the conversion process from DC to AC. Second, it needs to be designed for long-term use with replaceable components. And third, it needs to be affordable. So with those requirements in mind, I chose the PortaWell Starter Pack. Before receiving the filter, I spoke with the owner of the company, Bob, about his product. Portowell is a small company and more of a passion project for Bob than a huge moneymaker. He was very honest and upfront in our conversations, as I'll talk about later. I received the filter a few months ago during the drought of the Texas summer and waited for the opportunity to try it out. Okay, well we're finally getting some good soaking rain here in Texas. So it's time to collect some rainwater to put through our filter. So this isn't going to be the cleanest water and that's fine because this is going to be a good test. But I've put this little kiddie pool here under one of the downspouts on my trailer. And so it will collect a good amount of water for us to put through this filter and give it a really good test. Okay guys, here's what all comes in the Porta well kit. It gets shipped in a five gallon bucket to keep everything protected. Uh, here is the filter itself and the filters and the alligator clips and all the, the different uh, tubes and everything like that. The, the, there's a screen filter in there. Uh, we'll go over all that in a minute. It does come with instructions. Obviously it does not come with a battery but uh, this is a Miller Tech battery I'm going to use for the demonstration and for testing. This is a 12 volt kit as you can see so it will use 12 volts from this battery and it will suck up water. I'm going to put water in this um, bucket. It, it will suck up water, pass it through two stages of filters and then it will come out as cleaner drinking water. Now before we get started, I do want to let you know uh, I have talked extensively with the owner of the company, Bob. Uh, he does want to make sure that I understand and then I want to make sure that you understand that you can't just take any water and pass it through this system and make it drinkable. Um, there is no such filter. I know that that is the way that some filters are marketed where you can basically take pond scum, water, pass it through that and make it safe for, to drink. That's not the case. So the instructions are very simple. They come on the lid of the five gallon bucket here. And uh, basically the only thing that Bob wanted me to make sure that I understood and then I'll pass along to you is that the 
you put the filters in the right locations. This is the inlet on the right side. And this is the outlet on the, on the left side. So this one goes first. This is kind of the sediment filter. This is the one that the bigger filter that allows larger particles to pass through. And then the nano ceramic filter filters down to 0.2 microns. So that one will go second. And the reason for that is you don't want this one to cl get clogged up because this one won't allow much to pass through. You want um, this one to suck up the big stuff and let everything one micron or below through. And then this thing will filter out down to 0.2 microns. And this one will remove any pathogenic bacteria and cysts in the water. Again, this will not make it absolutely safe necessarily. Um, basically the, the saying garbage in, garbage out still applies. Um, you need to put as, as clean as possible water in this to get as clean as possible water out of it. Okay, I messed up the, uh, the routing of the cables here. Uh, I leave this kind of stuff in my videos because uh, I'm kind of an idiot sometimes. I did follow the directions, but I didn't look as closely as I should have. And now I've got to get this thing off. This is supposed to go here, uh, which I guess we're going to have to rotate it a little bit to reach. Uh, and then this one goes here. So the, the water comes from the inlet in through the pump inside the uh, into the inlet uh, port through the first filter into the second filter and then out this this hose okay so this is what it looks like when it's correctly set up You've got the power cord plugged in at the bottom here. You've got it connected with the supplied alligator clips to a 12 volt battery. And then this is the on off switch. This is the inlet side. I don't know if you can see the wording on the top there. In, out, so this, uh, this tube gets connected to the pump. I'm an idiot, I should have seen that and, and done that to begin with, but again, I show you these, these kind of things because I'm probably not the only one that's going to just ignore the instructions and do it anyway. Uh, and then the, the actual inlet with the little screen filter on it goes on this side of the, the uh, pump. And then um, the output is that tube right there. So I've actually got, for our test, I got some rainwater that I collected. It's fairly clean. I mean, it did come off the roof of my trailer, uh, so it's not, I wouldn't want to drink it at this point, but it's mostly uh, clean of, of sediment and stuff like that. 
Um, so we're gonna put the intake tube into that water and then I've got a clean container that had uh, distilled water in it. Uh, I've got that. We're gonna use that to collect the clean water and then I'm gonna collect a gallon, see how long that takes and then we're going to, I'm gonna actually drink it and let you know what I think. Okay, well that was crazy fast. That was about 60 seconds. Um, some of that may be because that's a lithium battery, so the voltage is a little bit higher, so it might be driving that pump a little bit faster. But still, uh, that took about 60 seconds to fill up a one gallon container with fresh drinking water. Um, as you can see, I had to, it was hard to, to videotape that because I had to, this this tube is all curled up and I had to kind of hold it, hold the uh, the intake uh, underwater uh, while while that was all going on. So I apologize that the video footage was terrible. Let's uh, go ahead and uh, take a drink and see what we think here. Tastes fine to me. I mean, but I'm a kid that grew up drinking from a garden hose, so. All right, guys, well, I, honestly, I'm, I'm impressed. I don't have anything that I can really nitpick on other than maybe the tubing uh, being not terribly flexible and, um, you know, they didn't include a whole lot of extra tubing to, like, make this easier to connect everything. Being coiled up is not their fault. They had to do that for shipping. I'm just saying that you know maybe there maybe there's a weight that they they could put on the uh, the little intake screen thing to to help hold it underwater. I don't know. Uh, that's really nitpicking. Uh, this system does not use much power. Obviously, it only took 60 seconds to fill up a one gallon jug. So filling up a very large you know filling up your entire uh, RV with water with fresh water or something like that would only take a matter of a few minutes uh, You know under an hour certainly anyway, those are my thoughts. Uh, I am going to continue to test this system uh, I'm happy with it. So again, this is an agenda free channel. I'm not trying to, to sell this to you I'm not trying to uh, Drive any affiliate links or anything like that, but I definitely think you should check this out for yourself um, It's it's perfect for my needs I'd love to see a 24 volt or a 48 volt version of this. Um, the, the, the size of this system seems perfect for applications like mine, uh, for people that are you know van lifers, for overlanders, for uh, people living in their RVs, for uh, people living in cabins, stuff like that. I think this is a perfect size, but I do think that a 24 volt or a 48 volt version to match up with more common voltages on solar panel systems might be a good idea in the future. Anyways, thanks for watching guys. I do plan to show this off again in the future um, as I continue to build out my systems. It's going to be basically what filters my rainwater and what gives me drinking water until I can get a well dug. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. If you made it all the way to the end, be sure to hit the like button and leave a comment and go to myportawell.com to check out the system.